Well, hi guys. Now here's a fun project for all those doing sublimation work. I'm trying to fit designs around a 12 ounce tapered latte mug. Now you can make this into a template, which is what it'll end up, and you can either use embedded artwork or drag objects directly into it as you need. You can change them around. The initial design will always stay the same and it's very reusable. So let's proceed. So begin a new document. In Designer, simply start with a new document. I've just used the standard A5 print sheet here, but that's going to change immediately. Set it to transparent and set the following measurements exactly. You want your document 300, and, or should I say, 3035.8 pixels wide and the height 1368.8 pixels height. Now it's also transparent background is set and I've just used RGB color. That's fine. That's really all you need. It's going to your household printer, I no doubt, so that's fine. Now you have a new document. To best see this effect, make the document transparent. And you can see this here. Save your document. Give it a name, otherwise you'll lose it. And I've called this one 12 ounce latte. Well, that's pretty simple, isn't it? Now the background. Place a white rectangle over the canvas. Make sure it's exactly the same shot size. Make sure it's perfectly white. 255, 255 and 255 in the RGB sliders. Now then, we need to place some guides exactly in the right place on the canvas because we're going to make the curves here. And let's look at the guides in detail. Now you can see them there, 328, 284.5, 1152 and 1369.1 pixels. Now Affinity Designer being what it is, that 1369.1 will probably end up 1368.8 or a 1 point over that. For some reason it seems to have a little bit of a problem rounding the numbers. Now, it, but it doesn't matter, it's, it's perfectly okay in this case. The vertical guides are 477, 1517.9 and 256, or is that 25, 2557 pixels, there we go. It's just very small to read just there. Okay, next step. Bring up the guide manager and enter those guides exactly assuming you've written them down somewhere because this screen will flick past and you'll have to keep going backwards and forwards. Just write them down somewhere and you can put them in. Now re keep in mind that the guides manager keeps all these things in alphabetical, if you like, from, well, in numerical order, from lowest to highest. So if you put in a high number and you go to add a new guide, it will move the guide that's the lower number. So just be careful you don't end up with the same four numbers. It's a bit of a fiddle and I don't know why they do that, but I'm sure they'll correct it sooner or later. They're your guides. And that's what they look like. Your canvas will look like this and currently you have one layer. It's just the white rectangle and the guides are showing on it. Now those guides, oddly enough, you'll see in a moment, are exactly where you want them to be able to bend some curves around there. And how do you do that? Well, let's begin to have a look. This is a, a tricky bit, really, and we need to draw in the outline of the curved latte mug. For this, we use the pen tool. So select the pen tool, set the stroke to four pixels, and the color to black. The stroke color is black. There's no fill. Place your first point on the left right there on that guide and connect all the points in one continuous line from start to finish. Place the point, hold, shift, click. Some lines may go right off the canvas and for some reason it does that sometimes but no matter, just leave it there, go to the next point and click. And then you can go back and use the node tool to drag them into place. When you're finished, press Command D to deselect. 
you must have one continuous line right around. So the top left hand corner there where the first guide is, put your first point there with your pen tool, go down to the bottom, that first vertical guide, hold the shift key and press click on your mouse. That'll put that first line across. Now go right across to the vertical line on the other side, put the point there and click your mouse, holding the shift key down. Don't make a new line, you're making a continuous line. Go up to the next point, top right hand corner, hold shift key, press click. Go right across back to the left hand side on exactly the same point and hold shift key, press click. Now some of those lines may skew off and you think, oh where's it all gone? Go and try and fix it by drawing the lines exactly. If the lines appear to be there but heading in the wrong direction, I don't know why it does that, don't ask me that, but it does. So zoom out so you can see the whole thing and see where the lines are. Then using the node tool, just grab the point and pull the point up to where it wants to be or where it should be. Top right hand corner, bottom right hand end of the first guideline and so on. Make sure they're all that shape. Don't try and use the pen tool because you'll end up drawing more lines and that's command Z or control Z to undo something you accidentally do straight away. Very easy. So your end result should look like that and it's one continuous line from the start right around and back to the finish. Now you can't see much of a line there at the moment but it is there and it's only four pixels thick and it's black so believe me it is there. So let's move along now. Now using the node tool again select the exact center of the top line and the exact center will show up because you get your green center lines especially if you've got snapping is on you get the greens and reds um, guidelines. But when your little point is in the middle of that line, you'll see a little green guideline there. Just hold the mouse key down and draw that curve up to the top of the rectangle there. Do the same with the bottom line. Draw the line up to that bottom line, that bottom guideline. There's your shape. And your end result will look like this. You may need to have one or two goes, but that's all right. Don't panic. Just keep doing it until you get it right. In the end, it'll be second nature to you. Now, note your layer display now, and we're ready to add our images. That's one continuous line all the way around, and it should show as one curve. If you do separate curves, it won't work properly. You can add a single image, or you can add an embedded image. Let's do both so you can see what happens. Now I'll reiterate that a single image is just an image you drag in and put it on its own layer and then, and then put it where you want it. An embedded image is actually an image within another file. And you can double click on the icon to edit that image in its other file then save it back and update it. Easy as that. And that comes in really handy if you've got quite a complex design that you want to put into that mug shape. Let's continue on. Select the image you want to put on the latte mug and place it as the top layer. Then drag it until the blue bar across the layers panel is halfway down the word curve there, the curve icon, the curves layer, and let go of the mouse. The curve will mask the image and you can see that there, it just puts it inside the curve layer. So it's sort of offset slightly there. When you first start out, the latte embed.png is above the word curve. You drag it halfway through the curve icon and let the mouse go and it'll pop in there. You'll see the blue line offset to one side slightly. It's not terribly obvious. You, you might have to watch for it, but when it does offset, let the mouse go and that's where it'll be. Now, select the curve layer. That's just at the top there. You can see in the layers panel I've got it uh, selected. 
And on the stroke option, set the color to no color so your stroke disappears. Otherwise you'll have a four pixel wide black border all around your image. The outline disappears. Now you might want a black line all around your image, in which case you leave it there. But most people seem to not want it there, so you just remove it. Easy as that. But wait, what can we do with this? You're thinking about something that's wrapped around the mug. Try it with a piece of paper. Obviously, if you have horizontal lines or lines of text, you will need to curve them to match the curve once you wrap it around your mug. That can be done in Affinity Photo or in other software you may find. So you need to put that image in its own file. And that's where embedded files come in handy because you can work on these images in another um, situation and then embed it in the outline. So there's an example. This is an embedded file. And you can see, if you look carefully, 12 ounce embed image and it's .af photo type file. Now, there's a couple of images there. I've left image floral selected, but you can't see it because daisies in the field image is over the top of it. Image floral 1 JPG is not selected, but it is there. So you can switch them around as you want them. Very useful, these files. Now, what do we do with this? So that will not look good when wrapped around a tapered mug, that ordinary straight one. A straight-sided mug? Yes, fine. A tapered mug? No. You can see there, it'll it'll look actually quite odd when that's wrapped around the mug. You can, you can test it out. Print it out. Cut the shape out, try wrapping it around the mug and see where your image ends up. So you have to modify the image. You can see also that it's an embedded file, not an image. To edit it, double click on the little thumbnail. Right at the left of the image there, there's a little thumbnail. You double click on that. Anything that says embedded document, same with Photoshop. It had, they're called mm, smart objects. Well, embedded objects here the same. Double click on it and you can fix it. Now, you can either do that with some degree of success in Affinity Photo or switch your image into another suitable program that can easily shape your images. Don't spend a lifetime trying to force a piece of software to do what you want to do. If it doesn't do what you want to do, go find a piece of software that does it easily for you. The idea is to get your work finished. So, put it into the embedding file and reload it into this design. Easy. Now, you can see that one's not going to be right because it's not wrapped around properly. But that one is. It's easy in Affinity Photo with Mesh Warp. And you can see I'm using Affinity Photo there. And I've used the Mesh Warp tool. And I've curved the image very roughly, I might add. I could have put the boundaries of the mug in there and curved it to exactly fit the boundaries of the mug diagram. But for the interests of this, I didn't want to spend, as I just mentioned, a lifetime doing it. But you can see the curve on the image. And if you wrap that around the mug, that will, this particular one will still be a little bit off, but it certainly be better than if you don't do that. Be careful of city buildings on the right and the left edge because the buildings will curve. Hmm, and that will look odd. So you then have to straighten the buildings. Now, this is all very easy in Affinity Photo, so um, you might be able to use that. If you don't have it, don't panic. Don't use images that have <laughs> horizontal lines in them or vertical lines. Now this is an example of a file you can use to embed images into another document. So modify your file and embed it. All done. And modified in Affinity Photo. Now it's a bit rough, but you get the idea. You can see we're back in Affinity Designer there, and the embedded file has been updated. So you get the idea. When that's wrapped around a mug, it won't look too bad at all. So, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the thumbs up 
to like. And you'll find lots of designs and, and um, sublimation things on the Envato Market website, Envato Elements. See, the link is down the bottom there. Now, that's an affiliate link. If you, if you actually subscribe or buy some material there, I'll probably make 50p. <laughs> 50 cents. So, I'll be lucky if I make that. Okay, thanks for watching.